Hi all, Mass Spartan Cup from Kaiser Power Electronics here. Today I'm here with a huge X-ray image plate scanner. It is the Fujifilm PCR Eleva. The good thing about this unit is that it actually boots up. Starts up, asks for a USB connection. So let's check out the PC and get connected up to the unit. PC has nothing special about it. It is a IBM ThinkSender. It is the model R15, I think. Um, says Intel Pentium 4 hyperthreading inside. We have a little marker here. Says PCR. I'm going to be very disappointed if that ain't the password. IBM Think Center Pentium 4. Oh, nice. What do we have here? BIOS battery was lost. So uh, yeah, lots of errors. Unauthorized CMOS change detected. I'm actually not sure what kind of Windows Windows XP. Okay, could be worse. Uh, I have seen something like Microsoft Vista Business. I wasn't even sure that that was a thing. But okay, boots right up into the program it seems, and apparently pointlessly clicking all around doesn't uh, change anything. Something like System Up Release, and then we can. Yeah, yeah, install that. And I think that the uh, monitor setup most likely has to do with presenting X-ray images in a true fashion. You don't want to get diagnosed with something you don't have just because a, of a wrong monitor setup. So this is a rather slow PC and software, it seems. All right, we have a login prompt. Now, uh, the uh, sticker on the front of the PC did say PCR, but, um, but uh, maybe it's the username? No? Username and password, maybe. Oh my god. Well, I'm both, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow. It's chock full of actual images that has been scanned. Oh, wow. There's actually pictures. What, what can I do here? Can I like press this examination? Wow, nice. Not even sure. Ah, okay. Here we have that. something like drag and drop. I'm no doctor, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is not a human, as you have a tail here and along with the testicles. Getting the image plate scanner up on the table is absolutely no joke, because this is around some 70 to 80 kilograms. It weighs just about as much as myself. So uh, luckily I have a strong wife, which uh, helped me get this lifted up on the work table. So let's get this torn apart. With all the plastic enclosure off, we can actually see here it uh, says Fujifilm. Over here it says Fujifilm, Fujifilm. Yeah, this is Fujifilm all over the place. This has nothing to do with the Philips. It was manufactured by their... Yeah, maybe they own each other or how that is. But let's just try to um, turn it on. Uh, let's see what happens. Maybe we can see some uh, motors moving here in its uh, initializing sequence. Okay, it's running some initializing. For certain, ha have something running around over here. Let's get the, the camera closer and look at the different parts on all four sides. At the top of the back here, we have a Fujifilm PCB SN in SND 23A, controlled by a Altera Flex FPGA. And we have three servo drivers sitting here, large integrated uh, black packages. And we can see we have uh, all the blue wirings out here, goes over to the stepper or servo motors. So that's quite clear, this is a control board for yeah, all the mechanical moving parts up here. And I'm actually not sure, but it does not seem to route cables downwards as there is some more uh, stepper motors underneath here that is probably on another PCB. Down here in the uh, image plate scanning area we can see we have some kind of uh, card reader, RFID reader presumably and then we have all the rollers that roll the film out of the cassette and through the uh, scanning optics, laser, whatever lamp they're using 
and then putting it back into the cassette which is handled on the upper part of the machine. SCN, probably short for a scanner. And um, here we have a small coax or RF cable along with a multi-connector. This tells me that we are dealing with a photomultiplier tube set up here. Uh, so that's what they're using to di digitize the image with. Um, seems to be the whole picture handling board here and we have some pinhead connectors over here and down here at the bottom where we have the connector out to the yeah, computer uh, sits in a PCI slot. So um, seems to be some kind of motherboard underneath here. So we will get a closer look at that later. There's a sticker worth noticing here at the side. It's just a power supply layout. But the um, manufacturer Suzuka Fuji Xerox. So uh, right now we have Fuji Xerox and Philips um, cooperating in making this unit. So everything that has to do with printing is presumably owned by the same few people. At the front of the unit we have another servo driver board sitting up here with the same Altera Flex FPGA and we have two stepper motor drivers sitting here and then we have a lot of smaller ones sitting over here but probably also some sensory inputs. There's also some yeah, smaller motors, uh, photodiodes, small pumps for vacuum etc. Down here we have some kind of a film compartment that it can lead, lean up against. In the upper left side we have all the gears for handling the cassette and opening it up and taking the film out. And we also have some stickers here that tells me this is a very modular build as this says frame cassette set unit and down here we have something said sub casing unit. So um, there was another sticker on the other side that says erasure unit. So perhaps with a few screws we can actually take this up in uh, some large chunks. So this is the sub cassette unit, sub casing unit. And this consists of a finely controlled motor for turning the film. Because this has to move the film at 4000 pixels for a single image. Uh, yeah, S for scanning one line at a time through the laser scanning laser and the photomultiplier tube. So this is a very precise motor. And we can also see some gearing over here for yeah, taking the whole sub casing unit down and get the film out and in again or however that works on the inside. The entire top came off now, which was the cassette handling unit. We got the, the upper servo driver board is out. The pretty huge power supply, which uh, presumably just is uh, mostly air from uh, the weight and the size. And then we of course have the whole cassette handling unit sitting over here. We'll take a look at that once we get this one out, which is the sub casing handling unit. As we can see this is all mounted on springs or rubber stuff in order to absorb any vibration because just the slightest vibration in 4000 pixels across a scanned x-ray film is enough to get a misdiagnose. You certainly don't want that. So if we take a look at the other side we can see that we did empty it out completely, that it was contained in these um, separate units. Just from the sheer size difference, that this is actually so much taller in this side, uh, on the back side here. Oh, that was actually the front. This whole uh, unit on its uh, yeah, vibration dampers is going to get out this way. And we have some metal here, which is a different color. Uh, we can see we have some screws underneath here that are not moving dismounting this part and then I can get into something like this and it seems to be mounted on some kind of a rail system. What makes sense as this is of course built to be serviced. That was just in place with six small screws. 
Wow, it's one of those nice ones. Yeah. One of those uh, thermally formed um, plexiglass fiber optic uh, light collectors up to the PMT assembly we have up here. Oh, this is so lovely. Medical. Handle with gloves and don't scratch, as it says on the sticker. Let's just get a bit closer to that because this is just awesome. I mean, look at that assembly. That is simply just beautiful. Up to the PMT. I did get it loose now. Um, had to really brute force some parts out of there. I got no idea how they got this frame placed with some stop here and over here where the screws are seemingly underneath it and there is no room to lift it up. So I actually got no idea how that got in place. It's not easy with a big machine like this. Maybe we can push it out to this side. And there we have it. An empty frame and we have the entire oh, cassette unit or inner cassette unit out of there now. I almost forgot about the main board. We do of course need to get this or the scatter card here. We do need to get that out because there is this interesting board underneath it which yeah, screams motherboard all over the place. And of course this nice RF plug, we are going to, to save that. One of these uh, small ones, as that's needed for the PMT. So it's pretty nice, everything is just built with wire harness. We're down to the uh, scanner board here. We have the uh, network card sitting down here in a PCI port. Which makes me think, is that really just a regular PC beneath here? It sits over here with a huge connector. Four rows of pins. That used a uh, Altera Max FPGA. And underneath here we have a Altera Cyclone FPGA. So this is an entirely Altera FPGA based system. Seems like we have some small co-processor here and we have all the RAM sitting up here. And then we have all discrete logics going out to this one sitting down here. A lot of power supply over here. But overall, yeah, pretty custom job uh, PCBs, uh, not something uh, you can just take down from the shelf. With the whole enclosure out of the way, uh, we now have the light assembly. And uh, that just sat with uh, six screws in total. So I think I can actually just lift this out. Wow. Look at that. That's not something you just bent in your workshop. Yeah, and it sits in this gooey thing. And I actually had to, to look up uh, the PMT assembly that I took apart earlier. That was a PMT 12A. This is a PMT 26A. So this is a much newer device. Let's see, it has its high voltage module thing there. But um, yeah, this whole assembly goes to the side and that's a project for a whole other video to uh, get this um, reverse engineered and get it working to do some particle detection. The scanning optics unit, which is the laser module, uh, just sits with four screws, which is actually a bit unusual as it has to be a very precisely aligned uh, unit, but maybe it can be calibrated and hence why the yeah, exact placement is maybe not that important. Don't hold here and where I'm holding. Well, we're not going to use that again. So uh, don't hold here. <laughs> what kind of stick is that? Place the optics unit in good case. This is the good case. But yeah, this is a complete uh, unit with the laser and optics in. 
that's for another video as well, so uh, stay tuned for that one later. The rest of the case is purely mechanical stuff and uh, some motors that we can see here. That's the, uh, the roller for the film feeder. We have all the uh, pulleys and uh, gears for uh, yeah, driving this up and down, which is just a, something like a case gripper or it's grabbing the film going down towards the scanner and then back again. And on the back side we can see we do have some more servos and also just geared DC motors. And we also have two in the front. And up here we have a barcode reader. It wasn't actually in RFID, but uh, just a regular barcode reader. So I guess uh, we'll uh, throw this away and take a look at the upper part. And to just go quickly through that, as that's mostly mechanical as well. The lots of uh, stepper motors, servo motors we have here, uh, driven by each their driver here, which is a STK 672-50. This is a four-phased um, driver. Actually seems uh, pretty uh, easy to interface. It just takes uh, a yeah, direction signal and... Um, a uh, clock pulse and that's uh, it for uh, for driving it so uh, they are probably worth desoldering from the pcbs or uh, maybe just hacksawing it out um, and keep the connector out to the motors other than that we have the same amount of gear motors and such in this part not that uh, much interesting stuff here except what is that handle over there Seems to be some kind of tool, some kind of poking device. What is the purpose of this other than seemingly to grab something that has been stuck inside the machine? But you would have to take all this plastic off and then get this tool out behind. I think I should probably have taken this PCB holder out and then it goes in here somewhere maybe does not seem like I can just... doesn't really fit anywhere here. That remains a mystery, unless somebody uh, in the comment section is a certified Fujifilm uh, Philips service technician that knows what this tool does. The erasure unit uses uh, cold cathode tubes. We have uh, four of them here. And uh, this um, very modular module here we have underneath here is like the motherboard of all these. It uh, can take a row of three on each side and it's this uh, small dual output high voltage power supply that we can see here. So a uh, neat little board, modular built uh, if you needed more erasure units. I guess this uh, could feed up to uh, something like three times, maybe even bigger tubes. But yeah, not much else to say about this. Unfortunately, one of the tubes are broken, so I'll just gently push, put this to the side. The power supply is rather big, so just from the sheer size of it. Now, I haven't peeked inside, but let's just take a look at the plate here. We can see it gives out um, plus 5, plus 12, plus 24, minus 15, and plus 15. So... Um, yeah, just from the weight of it, it can't contain that much. I think it's just different uh, PCB modules and then built into a larger... Oh, wow! I guessed completely wrong. That is one big unit. Oh, okay. We have a uh, filter sitting up here. We have some smaller power supplies sitting up here. But that's a huge power supply. I mean... That's the whole uh, length of the enclosure here. That's uh, half a meter worth of uh, PCB. Hmm, that might be worth keeping because that that must be a sturdy one. Also built to drive a lot of uh, servos, and I think it's actually rated for was it five amps input? Yeah, five amps at uh, 100 to 240 volt AC. So, um, yeah, it can deliver 5 amps at 5 volts and the 9 amps on the 24 volt rail 
other than that it's just a regular something like one amp half amp two amps on the other voltages so really a huge overspec power supply this is the collection of stuff from the mechanical parts that i did not show you at time lapse tear down off but some really nice parts out of it there is uh, four identical stepper motors and a smaller one but these are all of them 1.8 degree 1.1 ohm so uh, nice with four identical ones the drivers seems pretty easy to interface then there were also five gear motors so uh, all kinds of uh, different uh, gears here uh, might even be that four of them are oh, two identical two identical and then a third one here but uh, always nice to have some gear motors a huge solenoid for yeah activating something all of this is uh, DC 24 volt operated. Then there's a whole bunch of uh, optical gates, which is uh, yeah, eh, two different kinds really. We have a large gate and a smaller gate. But uh, yeah, also for sure useful for some experiments. Then there is this cute little pneumatic yeah, vacuum lifting thing here. We have two uh, suction cups, then we have a uh, pressure transmitter, we have two relays and a two-way valve here, and then we have the tiniest little cute diaphragm pump. I mean, look at that. That just is this tiny little bit. And that's enough to actually lift a piece of uh, x-ray film. So a lot of uh, really nice uh, mechanical and electrical parts out of this scanner as well. Thank you for watching. I hope you really enjoyed doing a complete teardown or almost complete. We take a look at the electronic parts and not all the kind of boring mechanical parts. But uh, for a future videos of videos, um, we are taking a closer look at the laser scanning module and the light assembly. And for the light assembly, we will also do a reverse engineering of the PMT assembly down here and get it to run in particle detections uh, like muons from out of space, which is a very cool amateur project you can do on particle detection. So um, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you liked the video. We'll check out some of my other videos. There are other X-ray equipment as well as other high power and high voltage equipment that I have done teardowns on. So do check out the playlist for that. So until next time, see ya.